the drums basically disrupt the rhythm, mm-hmm. which is such a bizarre thing because the song isn't in a in a in a f-ed up stupid weird time signature or, or it's not it's not a wrong rhythm. It's a very straightforward beat. But when the drums come in, they're like putting snare samples on the one and stuff so where it's, it sounds like it's off your brain will hear it as it's wrong but it's not losing time it's it's fucking weird welcome to every album ever with mike and Knox. my name is michael mansoor and i'm joined as always by my tanking co-host alexander volts say hello hello this is every album ever the podcast where we listen to every single album in the world one artist at a time it's a whole new discography per episode and today We'll be discussing every album by Injury Reserve. <laughs> Hello there. This was requested on Patreon by Amboss. However, uh, this is a, a, a wait. You know the story better than I do. This was like mo- this was a fun little coincidental double request on Patreon. Yes, uh, I think Cole, longtime listener Cole, also uh, I think this was like his his last. Hurrah. He canceled his membership, but he was very, very apologetic about it. It's look, okay. We don't mind. Look, financial stuff happens. We love the yeah. support. We love the listeners. Cole's been listening to us forever. So this was like his last his last hurrah. And I was like, funny enough, someone someone asked for that. So I was like, you you are you are good, my man. Yeah, to 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 like I'm leaving. I'm so sorry, but please think about doing injury reserve at some point. Like, Got you covered. Amboss got you covered. So, um, yeah. And of course, this is uh, as much as I do enjoy hip hop. Um, you're the hip hop man, so you're gonna have mm-hmm. to be steering this ship today. Ooh, I'm I'm gonna try. Um, no, very. I know very little about this band. They kind of flew under my radar. Uh, I remember giving one one album a quick listen. And I thought it was not for me. And oh. then and then upon doing this episode, I realized this is that's not an album you put on in the background. So uh, I, I, have a I, I know which album you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty obvious. If, if you're an Injury Reserve fan, it's kind of obvious which one it is. But uh, so apologies to Injury Reserve for not giving that album the proper time of day. But um, I think it's rad. Um, I I think it's a, a shame they're not around anymore, which I I get due to the death of member uh stepper stepper j um yeah yep. but yeah it was like they're kind of part of that like new wave of hip-hop where it's like jpeg and and brock hampton who also isn't around and like those types of cats who are just like incorporating noise and off-tempo beats and just very much like the experimental like not noise hip-hop but you know really really like pushing it and and playing with it in an in an age where mainstream hip-hop just feels more cookie cutter than ever before it mainstream hip-hop especially mainstream music i guess but mainstream hip-hop hip hop in particular has like with every passing month or year, it just gets simpler and simpler and dumber and dumber and more watered down until it's just like one hi hat sound with a guy talking. It's not even, not even rapping. It's like the most simplified tiny brain version of what, I mean, the shit that I love was late eighties, early nineties, which is like, Oh, this is, these guys are poets and they're, they're doing it fast and they're doing all these crazy things. They sound like drums, but they're just talking. And it's, so hearing this, it's like the most visceral opposite reaction of the simplified thing where it's the most insane abrasive. You can't <laughs> tap your foot to it. It's, it's no, ridiculous, no. It's, but, it, but I kind of love it. And the reason I end up loving it is because of the fucked up part of my brain that enjoys disturbing things that make me sad. This music, mm-hmm. th- this band makes me fucking sad. Like the, in a way I, that I can't really, it's hard for me to even verbalize. I think they definitely tap into that with a lot of their songs. There's um, definitely a lot more self-reflection going on in these songs than I expected going into it. 
very like interesting too to be a, a hip hop group from Arizona. Like you don't hear you rarely even hear about bands coming out of Arizona, let alone like hip hop bands. So Yeah, no, I couldn't think of it. Um I mean I mean you would you yeah. would think there'd be like a and there pro, there probably is a punk scene, but you know, just this like artists that when you say Arizona, you think boom but there i don't know there really isn't and i guess for me now it's now it's injury reserve i guess now it's injury reserve yeah you're right um you know what i was thinking of now i remember yeah jfa is actually came from jfa came from 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 phoenix um jfa is a punk band that's known for like southern california skateboard skateboard kind of punk Mm -hmm. um early early 80s but they're from phoenix so that's like literally the only band I can think of in the world. Is yeah. A, is a California <laughs> punk band because they originally came from Phoenix. By proxy of, of Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we have some notes here from our boy Tom Osmond, who does a lot of history for us and, and digs up dirt and contacts people for interviews and gets records for us in advance sometimes. Um, he pulled a, an interview from 2021 from Passion of the Wise. Uh, and yeah, that, that interview's Surviving members, Parker Corey, um, produ- producer, and Richie with a T, um, the other MC. Uh, yeah, because uh, the last album was released after Steppa, Steppa J. Groggs, after he died <clears throat> in 2020. Uh, but yeah, there's like, it's a little bit of a, it's not a huge discography, but it's a little complicated. There's only two main albums, but today we'll be covering the two albums plus their first EP not their first mixtape. I know there's like a there's several things. I think there's like yeah, two mixtapes. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And there's like there's like is there another live one? No, it's just a mixtape. Life in the Dentist is, is the mixtape. If I'm mm-hmm. not forgetting, but yeah, it, within these three records, um, I'm going in completely blind, and with each one, it, it takes you on a very different. A different journey. Each one is very, very different and very odd and very, I would say, across the board, pretty inaccessible. I think I think there's like elements of accessibility. I mm-hmm. think they start off a little a little normal. They maybe have yeah. a a handful of songs you could show to people, but uh boy oh boy, when it ends, that is for <laughs> that's for weirdos and yeah. weirdos only. Yeah. Yeah, boy, that's exciting. Um, but going a little bit into the backstory, I guess it started with um with Grogs, Grogs and Richie, uh, where they apparently they met at, a, uh, according to this piece, they met at a, a at a van store where where Grogs worked, and in which and Richie's mother owned. And uh, then eventually they found Parker. Yeah, this this piece is from from Pitchfork, by the way, in 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, it says without much of a rap scene in their hometown, Injury Reserve developed and first attracted a local audience by performing alongside punk and indie acts at shows around the campus of Arizona State University. That is odd. You got to out of out of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just for, like how necessity. Yeah, that's the word necessity. And what a thing! What a modern thing too. Like how much would this not fly in the '90s? Like mixing two completely different genres or two or three different completely different genres like that uh, yeah there's definitely the uh i think about like the long-term effect of those like first Lollapaloozas, where they were like bringing different genres at one festival so i think uh this is like the long game where like they're playing with like punk and indie acts, but it's not like, oh, they were spitting on us because we were playing different music or yeah. like we had to like win them over. I think most m- millennials and, and Gen Z, it's just like, listen to everything, pre- not what? everything, but more accepting to listen to different genres. Yeah. The internet has made everyone a fan of a lot more than just one genre. Even even though we we were of that generation before everything revolved around the internet, before smartphones, there were still very much like 
oh, they're only into punk. Oh, they're only into metal. Well, this guy, oh, he's into punk and metal. This guy's open-minded. Where yeah. Like, <laughs> like, oh, and he, forget about it. If this guy also liked rap, oh, he was a fucking genius. It's like, <laughs> it was so closed and, and segmented. And, like, uh, and now it's like, it just seems like taking for granted that everybody likes everything. Yeah, if I go on a date, I, I don't, I don't want to hear that she listens to everything. Tell me, tell me the music you hate, baby. Cause, there we go. That's that's a question. That's a good question. Because yeah, if you listen to everything, uh, you get in my car. We're gonna listen to Godspeed or yep. <laughs> or something. I bet you won't like. So don't yeah. don't come at me with the I listen to everything bullshit. I mean, if if no matter how open minded someone is. We can find something I, that they will hate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we'll we'll find it. <laughs> oh, I listen to a lot of stuff, and I have shit I hate. I don't. I don't tell people I listen to everything because I don't. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, says here also, Injury Reserve released their first mixtape, "Life in the Dentist's Office," in 2015, and then they followed it a year later with another mixtape, uh, "2016's Floss." Neither of those we'll be talking about, but uh, not long after that, in 2017, they released their first EP. Yeah, so first EP is 2017, last album 2021, and yeah, that's that's basically it for for backstory. We don't got a whole bunch there, but it, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I'm also like, this is very recent. I mean, this is really recent, this but it, one it, of the it newer feel, artists. Yeah, but it does not feel recent. The music doesn't feel recent. I mean, it feels out of I, time in a way. I think it does feel well, maybe because I was following it a little more closely but maybe yeah i suppose so um but hearing that i mean it's just sad because you hear where they were going and good god almighty that is very interesting shit and then yeah it's sad (laughs) but uh we might as well start if you are ready Oh, I am ready. Hell yeah. So this is the first EP. This came out 2017. This is Drive It Like It's Stolen. I like the way they like build this song up. Yeah. Oh, like I love his voice here. Yeah. See your work. It's so oh, close and calm. Saw gays and rich. Richie's really place. diverse. His but like yeah. different vocal you things he can do for a hip hop artist. Playing sound like a mm-hmm. kid do. You were saying some fuck is this do? See your work. It's almost sinister in the ways that lurk. The it's quality of his voice. The they all lanes in the first. What's the issue? You this song sounds like water. Issue. You was playing it does. Like it's got like the droplets and yeah. This too. Yeah, one, two, three more niggas shock my crew. Snowman, new chains, new do. Four, five, track nine, too smooth. Little nigga, I ain't playing with you. Little nigga, we don't play by the rule. It's interesting. It's like new ways in a whole different. I can't place a mood to it. See your work. It's just need a lurk. It's weird he's in the dirt and it's yes. most, some of the most calm calm rapping i've ever heard too it's like it's a weird pull here but like i can hear the influences the neptunes have had mm-hmm. on like newer upcoming artists like this is like they heard like those clips albums or you know the um the Neptunes, like other albums, and they just took it and made it darker and got a little weirder. But like the simplicity of it, well, I like just like the DNA of it. I'm like, oh, I can hear like that that early Neptunes production and how they've like evolved with it. Interesting because it's funny that is funny because of how much i loathed clips <laughs> and like i had such a bad it was three albums and i had such a bad time and you're not even i'm not even disagreeing there's just something about this one that feels a, a lot grittier and a lot strange just stranger the, the, it's oh it's, clips just, no, it's, clips no, it's strange. strange it was just yeah it's stranger for sure and i uh like for me like early neptunes i just like I think they're just like so crazy how they can make like pop music or like 
clips music or like i have like an affinity for the neptunes i was i was hoping maybe you would see uh when i did that episode that you don't uh but also uh i digress but uh this is one of those episodes where i don't think there's a bad like I did not have a bad time with this at all. I think all three things are are worth listening to. Definitely. I'm just I'm just gonna give this worst least favorite because I think every every release is like a stepping stone. Yeah, it's just like so crazy where we're gonna end this podcast at. Like this is like them in their infancy still. So just on that worst least favorite, but I still had a a great time with this EP. And I'm going to second that same worst least favorite. And even, and even then it's only because, um, going back to it, uh, going back to it after finishing it, it's like, who are these babies? It's only, it's only a few years before, but it's like, it feels so, (laughs) I mean, this is not simple, but it feels simple compared to everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's so interesting. Like you said, you have trouble like trying to place it. The second track, See You Sweat, is yeah. like more up tempo. It's still minimal, but like in a different world, or if someone got like the acapellas and did a different beat on that, I could hear that like being in the clubs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It is more. It- also one of the water songs. I mean, it has literal sweat drops as a sample. And then um, very much like the, you, I don't, I doubt they were the first people to do it, but you know, the Ying Yang twins is popularized like the, the whisper w- rapping. So there's mm-hmm. like a lot of that going on. The first, first two tracks, they even like yeah. tell you to clap your hands on sea sweat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it is more tangible. Cause I, w- I really didn't know what I was getting into from the first track alone. But I mean, by, by the third, by 91, um, Cadillac DeVille, it's already mm-hmm. like, okay, every song is going to be its own little universe. Cause they're all, I mean, these are all fucking wildly different. 91 Cadillac DeVille's like more, more glitchy got like the, yeah. the off, you know, just the beats and like there's snares on like ones and threes. It's very like off, but very cool. Um, I like I like the way uh, Richie and Steppa. I like their the rhyme cadences and the patterns on that one. They kind of feels like it's invoke like the way they're rhyming. Kind of feels like it's more like '90s, like De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest, mm-hmm. but the beat is nothing like it, and it's just such an interesting like blending of of these different things. That's interesting because that the beat to that is it's kind of like what I uh, what I imagine whenever I think of underground hip hop, I think of something that's not really song like. I think of it's just a collage of crazy samples. Uh, and here it's just like a bunch of reverse sounds. There's like little sparse vocal lines altered and floating around mm-hmm. underneath everything. It's not really like there's nothing melodic about it. It's just like a, <laughs> it's just craziness with a bunch of rhyming on it. Yeah, I think um, like you pointed out where like there will this be like vocals by themselves. I was like able to like isolate them and be like, oh, yeah, this would this would be like at home over like a, a diggable planet's beat or something. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Man, that's an interesting one too. I've got, I've gone back to that, um, that second album a good number of times since we did that episode. Uh, it's, it's, I feel uh, no, like the, the world knows now, like, I, I need, yeah, I feel like they know now, like that album got reissued. I see them like touring. I'm going to, I'm going to try to catch them one day. Nice, nice. I'm sure it's not expensive, but also I hope they're getting paid because they deserve it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, on Boom Times Three, we got some gorgeous haunting pianos opening that one up. Yeah, it's like serial killer pianos. It's mm-hmm. darker, it's angrier, it's just, it's so different. And we were talking, I was talking about richie's like diversity and his his voice i thought it was a guest artist or something but that's just him doing the screaming like that dude dude's crazy the different different things he can do so that's him interesting yeah because i mean that is the most aggressive vocals on the whole album i mean he's she's screaming it, yeah uh, i had to like look it up on genius and it said oh, it's shit. richie so interesting I, I also dig the drum traces there too really interesting stuff 
Um, in addition to it being the most melodic thing, one of the most melodic things in the album, mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty damn sick, dude. Uh, North Pole. Uh, North Pole and Color are we get the like more reflective, like introspective side of these guys. Um, North Pole is very like sentimental. Uh, has a main course that's being sung as opposed to a more like rap yeah. main course saying you know they're they're rhyming to their their friend who has passed away which is a bit of a um not like foreshadowing because they didn't know but it is kind of like knowing yeah. knowing stepper is gonna pass away it is a uh i think it hits a little little harder than intended definitely um north pole it's got this uh these really moving uh, acoustic guitar samples but it's it's more on the melancholy side it's really lovely whereas colors just seriously depressed me <laughs> like i love it i think it's it's my favorite song in the whole ep yeah but boy man it just there's something really subtle and moody about it um it's a great yeah. sample like that that little that little synthy sample on, um in the background is really i mean it's really effective yeah i like their i like their ability to you know have this heavy song subject about you know growing up as a black youth and then um well referencing funny things that ties it together i don't know if you caught it they they talk about the uh the paul mooney line uh i'm you know paraphrasing here because i don't want to get in trouble the everybody wants to be black but no one wants to be black from uh Chappelle show oh yeah. <laughs> yeah um so i thought that was like yeah you know they're able to tie in this like funny thing with this this uh you know more somber song but yeah the dark dark production on their rules definitely um chin up it's listed as an outro but it's a it's a three minute song i don't know it why, is yeah yeah i don't know why it's called an outro but it's great it's like the first bit of like um i mean it's it's still cold but it has more energy to it um it, it does it's, more, for, it's one of the more fun things that on on this thing it does for sure and i don't know how their mixtapes end but i feel like that's a theme throughout these three releases. They, to me, they always end on a high note. And I think yeah. it really, it really works for this band. I wouldn't, or group, I wouldn't suggest every artist does it, but there's something about the formatting and flow of their releases where I like, it's never like too overt either where it's like the happiness is like cranked up to a 10 it's it's just what you need after these these darker sounds it's also that song does something that i've never heard never heard Uh, it's the first hip-hop fade out i've ever heard where they're still rapping while it's fading out (laughs) that is i mean i've never even i never even thought about that and then so well yeah okay I can't even think of a of a of any hip hop song that fades out, but uh, I'm sure there's like a million. But it's just, yeah. it just I never thought about it. Definitely never when they're still rapping. Yeah, it's like wasted bars. Like I can't imagine too many too many guys would want to waste a few bars. But yeah, it probably exists somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's also I don't know. I I, enjoy, I enjoyed it just for that. Like oh, they don't they don't even care. That's because it sounds better with it's it's a better ending to do it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, it just felt very, it just felt like a very uh, bold artistic choice. That um, sometimes you got to sacrifice a little bit of something to make it better. Um, you know, it's just like a little, yeah. They don't have to be your best bars. This throw yeah, something just, out. Yeah, I found it to be on first listen anyway. I found it to be difficult and cold as hell and not accessible but going back to it it is one of their most accessible least difficult records <laughs> and <Yeah>. their worst <laughs> yeah i don't yeah these two first two releases were like a breeze for me but i also listened to clipping and oh yeah uh death grips so yeah. you know compared to those two this is this is walk in the park yeah but I, I didn't take note of the really interesting samples, the, I mean, this, the, the, the great character in the voices um, and the darkness 
love the darkness. Even if I don't, I don't think it's the most even EP ever, but every song is good. Um, yeah, and there's there's some real memorable moments on here. Weird, but we're gonna get even weirder. Yes, sir. So if you're ready, this is this. Yeah, this is both of our worst and least favorites. But you know, process of elimination. We're only doing three records. It's far from a bad album or EP, whatever. But yeah, I guess it's time to move on to the first actual full length. This came out in 2019. This is self titled. <laughs> Greatest intro ever. This noisy, silly, kind of like in the spirit of ODB, kind of. Like what? Kind of in the spirit of ODB. Oh, yeah. Particularly this part. Yeah. Already so much weirder than the first EP. Yeah. Somehow, like, sounds more expensive too. I don't know how that's possible, but. Yeah. <laughs> so metallic sounding. Still like that. Very, very, like, minimal, but not boring, like, yeah. production. Sometime how things align Let the fans that say We don't get enough shine I mean, shit Well, they is in line Seen a couple shitty deals That we had to decline Primo shit Better get the three in the prime From flash staff to check it And checks Corona and screams in the background Are real interesting I didn't notice them uh, On the first couple of lessons <laughs> They say they that was want that like the prime <laughs> attention getter for me. Oh yeah, that's an interesting opener. It's a cool, it's a cool opener. Yeah, cool I think uh, Parker Corey's like really, like really spreading his wings here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah and this then, is a whole new ball game. And then yeah, you get DJ cuts by a track on there. Uh, Richie's second verse is. It's funny, like the first verse is very rappy, but then like the second one's very like simple and sing songy. I like the the compare and contrast there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, uh, we got. I keep forgetting that Rico Nasty exists, but she's on, I, she's on never, Jawbreaker. <laughs> never forget my <laughs> my wonderful Taco Bella. Um, <laughs> yeah, her on Jawbreaker is interesting because whenever I see her, I want like that raw, angry, aggressive thing. But she does do other things. But I yeah. just I like that side of her the most. Um, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting her to be so uh, clean and like smooth on that one. Yeah, especially on a song that's kind of about developing your own style and being your own person. Um, it's kind of clean in that way uh at the end does feature some some blown out production to remind you you're still listening to weird stuff um yes yes, yes. Around the, in the final 30 30 seconds they get, I mean, they get giant fuzzy crazy shit and yeah i had no idea who fashion designer ian ian connor is but you know there's some shots taken at him here in this song and uh the dude was hit with 21 rape allegations so that's a lot a lot that's a lot <laughs> that's 20 that's 21 too many that's, that's huh well jesus well uh, so you know i wasn't uh, expecting uh, to learn a, you know you, you this I think that's why I like rap music. There's this these references. You're like, what are they talking about? And you go and look it up. You're like, oh Already. shit. <laughs> they, they are very uh, rich with reference. I that is mm -hmm. indeed true. Uh, but but the the rest of it. I mean, uh, before it gets all crazy and fuzzy. I mean, it's, I mean, I don't know if that's xylophones or marimba or something. But it that's what it's that's what it is. It's very percussive. It's very minimal. It's a super it, unique feel to it. Yeah, um, and this. And it's got funny lyrics. It's I mean, and the lyrics are funny. Yeah. But even if they are about a, a weird bad person. And then uh then we got some some JPEG. Yeah, get the, on, the fuck, get the fuck out. up. That's what I thought Rico was gonna gonna bring, that kind of energy. But we got JPEG, 
yeah, noisy glitch stuff. Um, it's very cool in the headphones, the amount of like back and forth. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like maybe too excessive, but I was oh. like, I was like, I can't really think of another artist that has like indulged in the panning this much on a song. So, oh, Jesus. I'll, I'll allow it on one song. It's cool. okay. Okay. But, but plus, so it does all that crazy shit and it's, I mean, the, the rhyming is so fast and it's a very nice change of pace. And then at one thirty, the, the most incredibly gorgeous sample comes in and <laughs> oh, it's just amazing and it, it's so <laughs> moving and emotional. And then as it goes on over, over top of that insanely beautiful emotional sample thing, you get these, fu- these get the fuck up screams over and over again. And it's like disturbing. It's like, it, it, it creates like a nice dichotomy, nice disturbing dichotomy with the, one of the most beautiful parts of the whole album. It's also very funny to have JPEG. I'm sure he like contributed to the production, but like he doesn't, doesn't rap. It's just scream. He's just screaming on here. So that's yeah. He great use, God. great use of him. Yeah. I like the, very like quick interlude they have here i think it's oh, it's night yeah it's very nice after you know the chaos that is get the fuck up it's like a um it's an interlude but it's like a mel- it's like a, a i mean the, the joke is that it's a c it's a cd skipping but it is it is literally a 30 second song that just keeps skipping so it ended up mm. just annoying me on second listen really i yeah i don't know there's something very pleasant about it to me where it's one of those interludes where i'm like i wish it was i wish it was longer although i guess i could just put it on repeat and (laughs) yeah fair enough uh but yeah it is it is definitely an interlude to jailbreak the tesla which is pretty fucking great (laughs) fuck yeah uh sampling the tokyo drift song i didn't know that's what that was (laughs) i've seen it Oh, dude! You never heard Teriyaki Boys? Is that I what think that's called? What, I think that's the guys who do this. It's just like, oh, oh man, that's a wild name. <laughs> it's a it's a banger. It's a banger. So sampling it is a banger, and it's just a silly, fun song. There's no, not a lot of uh, depth on this one. It's just you know they say let's take the Tesla to West Coast Customs and that kind yeah. of you know it's, if you're old. If you remember Pin My Ride, like we're, I'm that old now where I have to be like, remember Pin My Ride? <laughs> Man. But but do you remember? I mean, it was pretty funny. Remember- <laughs> that was a, that was a put, dumb like, fucking show. <laughs> it was a dumb fucking show. They put fucking like aquariums in your trunk for no fucking yeah. reason. They ruin your car and then they, they ghost you. That is, that's like every story I've heard about that. Oh, that it's, show. it's crazy. It's a <laughs> crazy. The <laughs> amount of lives they ruined on that show. <laughs> uh, but the song is great. I mean, it's real mean, real heavy uh, with super great, super fast flow on there. Ah, it's great. Uh, it's also get- like, like the close maybe because it's just the sample i was the most familiar with it felt like the most like simple sampling where i'm like oh, really? okay that's this that's just the tokyo drift song yeah I, I mean i could say that about a lot of stuff it's it's it could either go if you recognize the the sample it either enhances it or ruins it for you mm-hmm. uh, well you know what I can't even say that because I, I guess if they fuck it up and they and they change it and they make it their own, then it could definitely enhance it. But if it's just the same, ah, whatever, you know, teach their own. But uh, we get yet another completely wild left turn with gravy and biscuits. Oh, this like Latin piano samples. It sounds like yep. I I love the rhymes and flows by Richie and Stepper on that one. They're this really in their groove. Uh, reminds me. The way they're attacking the song reminds me of like hieroglyphics, which featured Dell, the funky homo sapien. Uh, yeah, the way they're rhyming that made me think of there. I really like the like slowed down evil vocals in the background, too. Mm, that's a fun one. Uh, and it's surprisingly catchy. And it, it's with I mean, there there are moments of like really nice, pretty stuff and in, 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 in hooky stuff. But uh, they're like spaced out. So even though Jebek the Tesla is catchy in its own way, it's not exactly like those aren't like 
it's pretty, it's still kind of brutal. Um, and then you get gravy and biscuits, which is like, ah, it's a fun little Latin thing. Um, I actually quite love rap song tutorial. Yeah. Rap song tutorial by a lesser group, I think would be too cutesy for its own good. But here it's tongue in cheek about how predictable rap music is. And it is a neat, like deconstruction of a rap song. It's, it's like the most self-aware song ever written. (laughs) It's, 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 I mean, cause it's literally a song in tutorial format. And then, and and even if you were to take away the gimmick of it, it's still a great song. Yeah. And, you know, having like, you know, this, this robot voice, a la fucking Midnight Marauders um, mm-hmm. coming and, and explaining like, all right, the next step is this. I don't know. There's something really funny about it. It's also very short. So it's like, I don't know. It's, it's well executed with a, with a pretty cool idea. Um, yeah, I guess that's even if injury reserve is doing a joke song, it's better than people's full attempts at a rap song. Indeed. And speaking of joke songs, Wax on, which literally samples the Karate Kid. Hell yeah! Also, you got Freddie Gibbs, Gangster Gibbs, on here. His verse. Mm-hmm. This goes into overdrive. Like man, he went hard for no reason. <laughs> well, not no reason, but he went hard. And uh, yeah, here now the production. I'm starting to hear like the like that made me think of like Dark Twisted Fantasy era Kanye. Which is, you know, well, he, uh, um, they do sample Kanye. I don't know if they do it on that song. Um, no, no, there's no. this, there's this something about the production style that made me think about that album. Yeah, interesting. Because yeah, they do they do sample Kanye later on, or maybe it's somewhere else in the album. I'm forgetting, but, um, yeah, that that one they they sampled Chili Gonzalez featuring Kaiser Quartets. No idea what that is. Their samples on this album are i'm not familiar with a lot of it but it's really they're, they're kind of interesting um they sort of go all over whereas with the samples that they'll start using in the next album it's very much like whoa whoa dude you're now not you're recognizing just, any of those i am i'm recognizing all oh, really? those uh, the yeah, next but, oh shit okay do, do you are you familiar with the samples on the next album that, nothing jumped out on me okay then allow me to we'll get there and don't okay. look it up. I want to okay. get your, your real time reaction, but here, this is stuff that I'm not, I, I, I would never, I would never guess. Um, but what was it? Um, and on, uh, what a year it's been, get some really creepy, creepy vocal samples with some very moving lyrics. And I'm loving that production. Yeah. Wax on what a year it's been one, two punch of, you know, these reflective tracks looking back, on uh you know where they've been where they're going and uh they're basically rapping acapella on that one there's not really a beat if you want to call it that until like halfway through and man man this is this is like if you want to like study a song on how to like pick up the energy this like have this like subdued vibe and then like once the drums come in Oh man, it really, really oh, effective. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean they're, they're giant. They're super distorted. Um, the only thing I don't like about them is that they they actually drown out a lot of the samples on there that I mm. love. Um, which is, I mean, it's still cool. Um, and they're still there, but um, they are pretty overwhelming drums. But goddamn, it's a cool song. Um, Hello is only a minute, but it's extremely memorable. Um. It combines these nostalgic sounds with murder bass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a short, more, more experimental man. Best spot in the house. I really love the use of these like slow guitars in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it sounds just, like it's about to be a, a post hardcore song or something. It's it yeah, it's really close to that, and then it just goes into like noisy synth stuff. Some lo-fi production um another you know looking at how life is song where they talk about how getting a little bit of little bit of fame and money has impacted their relationships um rare vocal appearance by parker Corey or Corey. what sorry yeah parker Corey. yeah yeah, yeah. 
Uh, he's got the assists with the auto tune main course there. So oh, okay, um, yeah. I mean, I've never heard a beat like that, man. But I, I love it. I mean, and they have these those ser- those theremin sounding synths uh, mm-hmm. that sound awesome. And, and it, at times, it sounds like they're not power tools, but they. If you told me they were power tools, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of wild stuff just packed in that mix. Um, the only song I don't really care for is New Hawaii. Same, same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm. I've never been a fan of like the it's a funky talk box stuff, and there's a lot of it on there. I like the opening minutes, kind of a slog. I think this because it's so repetitive, and then once the talk box stuff comes in, I like it. And then there's this, this section where it's instrumental, and really, if this was just like instrumental, I would probably love this track. Hundred like, percent. Yeah, but if it uh, wasn't for, the vocals take almost all of it away from me. I do like Dram's voice, um, but he doesn't add anything, or he doesn't take anything away either on this, but. Um, yeah, I instrumentally it's there. There's just something about the the collection of vocals on here that ends up being a miss. Yep, same exact exact for me. Um, although it I, the it ends with these gorgeous strings. I mean, it's so oh, it sounds mm. the ending is phenomenal. The ending is wonderful. Yeah. Um, and the closer, another it, it, the similar to what it did on the what they did on the EP. It brings in the light. The first yes. bit of light that we've had in a while. Yeah, um, you really... Like an 80s SNL sax, <laughs> sax is all over. <laughs> yeah, you really need this, like, upbeat, jazzy song. It's fun. It's groovy. It's not... It's not their main bag, but, like, they're, they're fucking good at it. They're real good at it. They could just do a whole album of songs like this. It and feels good. Yeah. Dude, the... The way they're using that sax sample is so interesting to me where it's like it's looping, but then they'll manipulate it on certain parts and you're like, wait, is this like a different sax? And I really, I just love the way that sample was used where it sounds like you're getting these different performances out of it. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And it, and it kind of gives you this little warm feeling, um, by the end of it, because it is, I mean, it's, it's still a cold album. It's still a very difficult album, but that's, it feels good. It's, it's got a nostalgia to it that also, whenever they do something nostalgic, it ends up landing pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Like, like kind of like we were saying, but um, it's, yeah, I find this to be a very stimulating and fascinating album. It's not like, like I, yeah, it's, it's, it is difficult. But I do like it a lot because like the moments of of beauty are pretty spectacular, mm-hmm. um, and there's like brilliant ideas scattered th- throughout. But it's not like instantly lovable or catchy, and, and it does require a lot of listens. It does require a lot of pink. Like you, again, this is not a background band. It's you. You'll forget about it or you'll hate it. I think if mm-hmm. it's in the background. And yeah, I agree with that. There wasn't. Like if I wasn't doing it for the podcast, like there's nothing that like grabs my attention. Like I really benefited by just sitting down and listening to this music. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is, it's extremely arty despite the fact that you don't hear that often attached to hip hop, but some of it's just stri- like, this is arty as fuck. This mm-hmm. band is already as fuck. I mean, I mean, there is not even any wiggle room there. It's like if you're <laughs> not into like extreme art, you're probably you don't care how much you like hip hop. You're probably not gonna like this at all. Um, kind of got to be be into something extreme a little bit, or at least have a fascination with it to appreciate it for something. And yeah, like I said earlier, I feel like their peers are kind of there. Like this is very much like. Armin Hammer, Billy Woods, JP yeah. Mafia. It's they're all kind of like from the same cloth. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Um, I have a tr- I'll, I don't even though I do love this more difficult stuff. I have a lot of trouble with a lot of those artists, like because I mean, it's just, some of it's just so difficult, and you have to it, grab onto something. Uh, but these guys are I don't know there's something there's something really special about these guys. It can be dense, and I think that's a great segue into the next. <laughs> because in case you it, if it wasn't difficult enough already, we have one more, <laughs> and it's the last album before that in 2020, like after the year after this oh, album yes. came out. That's that's when um that's when Stepa died. 
uh, full name Jordan Groggs, uh, at 32, which mm. is pretty terrifying and sad. And um, nobody, there wasn't a whole lot of, um, not, not a whole lot of information on how he died. It just sort of said it, that he died. And then there it is. Um, the, the quote from this Pitchfork piece says, the Arizona hip hop trio confirmed the death of the rapper known as Stepa J. Groggs. Um, and quote, a loving father, a life partner, and friend. And yeah, it's he had four kids too. Holy shit. That guy fucks. He sure does. If you take one look at him, you know, you know he does. It's per- he has four kids to prove he fucks. <laughs> at least four times. But <laughs> yeah, it's super sad. And then hearing the next album with that in mind, it it, it affects it. And they I believe they they toured this next album without him, which you could find a bunch of whole bunch of stuff on YouTube, a bunch of live performances, and it's there's something extra heavy about it. Like it just it that, just feels emotionally heavy. Yeah, that reminds me when Shribe was performing after Fife Dog passed away, and it's this same vibes. Yep, hundred yeah. percent. But might as well get into it. This is the last album. This is 2021's by the time I get to Phoenix. <laughs> So this one has a bit of a an intro because it is a very different kind of song. Yes. Uh, I don't even know when you cut it off, but I guess that's on you. There is no proper time to <laughs> cut this off. It's like a six minute song and it does so much and it's really hard to get a grasp of what they're doing for a yes. while. Yes. Um you talk to him. Bobby. I don't even know if you want to call this rhyming. I've been talking to him Kali. Yeah. That reminds me of Tracy Morgan, too. Yep. You have a break up a fight holding a baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been talking to him Kali. Man, those like. Oh, ah, yeah. they're so cool. It's so cool. Super cool. And this is like the loosest rhythm ever. There's no drums. The, the actual beat is very floaty and loose. You kind of don't know who, if anybody's following anybody, but it still feels really, really pretty. He's doing his own fucking thing. You can just stalk him. Let's cut out that bullshit. What's the elephant in the room? Let's talk to him. Come on. Let's talk to him. Don't hide. Great bass lines, too. Walking in circles. I know this album does have contributions by Black Midi. I don't know where. Damn. So you are correct in that Black Midi is on this. They sample Black Midi on here. Uh, I will let you okay. know the song when we get to it. It's not that Okay. Much. I didn't know because I read they contributed to the album. So I didn't know if it was oh. like... I didn't know if they came in studio, if it samples what that meant, but obvious best best yeah, best person pers- favorite. This this I don't love this album right now. I need like a year, maybe six months to stew with it, but it's so creative, it's so unique. I can't I can't deny it. It's I can't. wild, man. It's I, it's so inaccessible, dude. It's I, like, I and I upon I slept on this album. I do remember trying to give it a listen in twenty twenty one for my list, yeah. and I I think in making the list, I you know like my plate is full, and then hearing that, my brain is like, <laughs> but yeah. now and also I think I was kind of turned off by some of the auto tune performances so i thought maybe it was one thing but again if you sit down and you listen to this and you don't do anything else it's fucking dense it's a journey it's it's unique uh maybe comparing it to you know bc boys paul's boutique is Mm. i don't i don't want to like turn anyone off but like it's like that same that same feeling I had where it's like, what fuck? There's so much going on here. There's so much going on. It's, uh, 
really unlike any hip hop album I have ever heard, and, it, and it, not it, even close. Not even it, cl- like I com- compared it to Paul's boutique, but only in my like reaction, not the way it sounds. It is dense like that for sure, but the, uh, like I said at the very top of the episode, there is no tapping your foot to a lot of these songs because they're they are intentionally disrupting the rhythm Mm -hmm. so to where you there is no real rhythm so on that song in the opener um outside it's as you guys heard it's it's very floaty and loose and there's there's it just kind of goes like that for a while and then um around 220 this rumbling that feels like fire starts coming in and then you think it's just like this this kind of epic sort of uh i don't know almost like mood piece and then uh around 350 this dance beat fades in hell yeah like, yeah the first beat we get it's like a fucking hell yeah. fast dance like nothing about the first four first four minutes gives you the impression that's gonna be a <laughs> fast song like it's just really they play with their expectations <laughs> in so many ways yeah um i'm like just based off this album alone i'm like really interested in seeing what like parker Corey works on and does yeah uh richie as well but like i like parker's a a fucking madman like yeah what he did here is just insane absolutely fucking insane uh superman that is the first song that that's a song that inspired or like the the framework of the whole album was based on that song okay um so if you kind of go in with that knowledge of the first song that that was written for the album was superman that and then then that then everything else came after it makes a lot more sense because that song is fucking nuts it has the most abrasive rhythm i've ever heard it's it's glitched the fuck out too and yeah i think that was the song where the auto tune vocals I kind of like checked out because it's so early on. But yeah, the album is so much more than that. And I think they're one of the few groups that uses auto tune as a a tool and not a not a crutch. Yeah, because it's so the auto tune stuff, I, I didn't like it so much either, but they even then they feel more robotic than like they than the than the, the, the typical pop music use for it mm-hmm. it feels a little bit more yeah like i mean glitched out like you said but it's a it's really the whole song is really hard to follow but the melody cuts through uh, and even though it's it sounds like again if you have this on the background it's it's chaotic noise that's not following any rhythm and it, stink, it stinks but when you're paying attention to it it's i i get the noise rap label hearing when I hear this song, like I get, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, w- I would get that it's borderline proggy. Like the, the structures are so fucking nutty and complex and you don't know how any of it goes together. It, it's like a fucking trout mask replica thing where it's like, <laughs> they're all doing something together, but you can't, you have to like almost, uh, like put your whole brain flat on a table in order to like, okay, th- this thing is doing this and this thing is doing this and this, cause it, you put it all together and it, it sounds like fucking mush. Everyone's playing a different thing at the same time, but it does become something also, which I was never expecting Superman that samples black country, new road. Of course it does. Yeah. Of, of course, course it does. does. It, yeah. It samples uh, Athens, France, which I believe is on the first album, which I still haven't heard cause I stink. Um, yeah. I just love the second album so much. <laughs> uh, so, that's already like okay what what the fuck they're 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 sampling a different sect of music here uh now they're basically looking at all our all our episodes and picking things like you know stuff yeah. that we would listen to or the stuff i would listen and listen to but then we get ss san francisco i enjoy the uh dark jazzy bass line there like a post rock guitar uh and the vocal performances all over the place too and oh, you yeah. get also this is the first time in the album where i'm like oh there's like a traditional rap verse going on oh okay that's like the first like rapping thing or, or like like i said traditional rap going on interesting because it's funny you thought that because when it at least for the first chunk of it it doesn't it, to me it doesn't feel like feel like rap at all like, oh no, not bef- in the first bef- chunk. Yeah, yeah. Like before the drums come in, it doesn't feel like rap at all. Yeah, it's so weird. It's so weird. But when the drums do come in, 
uh, it's the drums basically disrupt the rhythm. Mm-hmm. Which is such a bizarre thing because the song isn't in a in a in a fucked up stupid weird uh, time signature or, or it's not it's not a wrong rhythm it's a very straightforward beat but when the drums come in the they're like putting snare samples on the one and stuff so where it's, it sounds like it's off it's it seems off even though it's not your brain will hear it as it's wrong but it's not losing time it's it's fucking weird mf doom smiling down on these dudes mm, <laughs> yep yep also uh that song samples the fall which is a oh. fucking wild band for a hip-hop artist to sample <laughs> just sampling all the weird weird stuff that's insane weird british stuff yeah um man footwork and a forest fire i'm just like it's this unusual odd and unique um it's i think that's the song for me where like if i had to like paraphrase this album in one song it'd probably be that it's like like free rap or post hip-hop it's just i don't I don't know what to call it or compare it to. It is impossible to compare it to anything. It, it comes in with these big rolling jazz drums um, and super complex rhythms, super abrasive uh, vocals. <laughs> I mean, it's the vocal samples here are almost overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it eventually, as it goes on, it slows and slows and slows until it stops. I mean, it's, 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 it's very taxing. It's a very brutal song. <laughs> It's kind of a taxing album in that way because Ground Zero doesn't let up either. It's it's dense. It's insane. I yeah. had to go back to it a few times to process what I was hearing. It's so warped. It at this point in the album, the album is getting very very warped, and it's becoming like that's like the black hole area of the album where everything is getting more and more fucked up. And Ground Zero is like, the, I think one of the most fucked up. Um, in a way songs. that. The album does kind of feel like mourning in a yeah in some ways yeah it's, it's a very chaotic painful part of it and and, and the again this the like these few songs at least handful of songs in a row the rhythm is just so fucking nuts and uh it's it's like and all by the way the Grand Zero also samples the fall and a, a different <laughs> fall song um but I like I enjoy this in a very similar way that I like. Um, that I like unsettling brutal metal. It's like, mm-hmm. it's not for, it's musical in, in a way, but it's not like what people would think of when they think of music. It's, I enjoy it the same way I enjoy dark art or horror movies or something where it's just like, it's fucked up and it's making me feel unsettled mm-hmm. and it's not pleasant. Therefore I like it. <laughs> um, continuing that smoke don't clear. That is like anti club or like anti-hit music where like it kind of bangs like if you <laughs> sit and you listen to that you're like this kind of slaps it's got them techno drums dude it, yeah <laughs> no one no one normal people wouldn't hear it and be like oh i could dance to this but if you like a weirdo and you just sit there you're like oh, i could hear that i could hear yeah. that yeah, definitely. Uh, it's noisy and unpleasant uh, and, a, and a good chunk of it, but I find it to be extreme and <laughs> fascinating. Um, in addition to the <laughs> wild techno drums. Um, from the from this interview with, with Richie and Parker, uh, they asked, they, uh, their response to, to being described as noise rap, Richie said, I haven't really gotten the noise thing. It always made a little bit more sense in regards to a live show when we, when we do certain things. I think we're grown enough now where we just get what everyone's trying to say and it's all in somewhat good faith. You just kind of laugh at it and watch people argue about it and shit. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, obviously, I don't think they're going in being like, oh, we're always hip-hop. I mean, obviously not. But certain it's, thing is like, what else What else could you call it? I get, I get why people would latch onto that kind of title. Yeah, to me, it's not abrasive the way like clippings or death grips is where there's like literal alarm clocks or... You know, MC Ride is fucking screaming at you all the time, and Zach Hill. Or Zach is, Hill, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it's not noise in that sense, but it's yeah. definitely off the beaten path. Yeah, it's like I would probably call it more experimental than noise. Just I agree. It's, yeah, I agree with that. And this, and this thing, uh, in regards to to Superman, and that. So apparently, there's this rumor that. 
uh, that song came from a, an improvisation. Uh, imp- that that song came from them playing it live randomly off the cuff uh, at, at, at um, 55 dates into a tour at the back of an Italian restaurant in Stockholm. <laughs> so that's like the rumor. Like, okay, that's a really specific. <laughs> Yeah, they got like super fans. Yeah, so Richie was, said, uh, no, I, w- I wouldn't say that it changed much in regard to a live show, but it definitely was sparking our interest off the stage, especially when we got back and really listened to the, the one track. It's funny, Parker was like, big ups to the YouTube copyright shit uh, because we were just going to throw the whole set on YouTube. He got flagged a bunch. If it didn't, it probably just would have been up and we wouldn't have thought twice about it. But after a little bit of time, it became Superman that which the album was built around. So interesting there, yeah there is truth in that like they it came from like a live set a yeah. specific live set that they had recorded that they couldn't keep online and decided to just keep fucking with it um parker said in the lore there's this idea that superman that was just randomly banged out on the spot that would be a bit fictionalized for sure it came together because it was a beat that i made like six months prior i think nate had written to it at least the hook or something none of us had fully tapped into it and it just happened to come together there so there's a little bit of that. I mean, that is pretty cool, though, that like their live shows are that flexible that they yeah. can, you know, not in the same way that Swans would, you know, coincidence that I'm wearing the shirt, um, where they kind of write the new album touring, the one they mm-hmm. just released. Um, it's not exactly like that, but they definitely um, they have flexibility with it and they, they take things that they fuck around with, some imp- some improvisational stuff. They take that and then there it is. They got a whole new completely new musical direction based off of that yeah it kind of reminds me of uh when i saw jpeg where it's this like he's playing a few fan favorites but he's also gonna sing a fucking morsi song and try out some new songs and he's got all this shit on his laptop and it's this very like chaotic and and free forming in that sense yeah, I, I I love that. I prefer that, honestly. Like, yeah, I mean, you play the songs I guess people like. That's why that's why people go to concerts a lot of the time. But also, I like the idea of just fuck you. I'm playing whatever I'm doing. Like, that's, hip, it's something hip, really re- refreshing about that. Yeah, hip hop's so interesting to me as a live, like a in a live format because it does feel like in ways you're you're married to the songs because you have your samples and whatnot, especially the, especially these days when, you know, it's on the, it's on your computer and like a band, you know, you have your instruments and you could go into these different things, but uh, yeah, a hip hop, it's, it's very hard for hip hop groups to like nail a live show, at least in my opinion, like, you almost have to be very meticulous and tidy and clean. Like I think Arm and Hammer's like that. Uh, when they were around, like Jurassic Five was like that. Um, Red the Jewels has this energy to them where it feels like a rock show, but a lot of a lot of people are just fucking messy or, or calling it in live. It's a. I wish it was something that it was more defined and. I wish more hip hop acts would like focus on that part of their their game. That's the really tricky thing because it's all production. So what are they? What, what can they do other than fucking play the beat and then rap over it? And a lot of times they don't even they don't even uh, get oh, rid of the dude. vocals on the mix and they just sing over it, which is fucking annoying as shit. I I hate it. Maybe like the main course if it's an artist, you know, a featured leave it in but like oh man when they leave the vocals in for the whole fucking song it's insane mm, it's insane I, they're just it's worse than karaoke at that point because karaoke at least it's your voice and they like, i don't know yeah they can't stay on top of it either that's the worst part like if it was the beat you have like the wiggle room to do errors or be a little off but when you're going exactly over your own voice like if you get winded or yeah oh man it sounds it sounds bad it sounds bad yeah like the the only i mean it it it, the only way i think it it could be like a band the way we see live bands 
is if just the entire structure of the the artist was different. Like if they were shut, playing it live, if they, if they were actual. Like, shout out to the Roots. Roots crew. Shout out to the Roots. Hell yeah. I mean, that's they, a band. They're fucking insane. One time I saw, I saw them at a festival and I wanted to hear the Roots. You know what I got? I got a fucking, I got some Roots songs and I got a fucking like 20 minute rendition of Bob Dylan's Masters of War, where it was this like quest love, the guitar player, the bass player, and their their tuba player, Tuba Gooding Jr. Yep. And yep. like Gooding. Yeah, you can do that as a band, but like, yeah, if you were, you know, only had beats and stuff, you couldn't you couldn't be like oh well we'll do the masters of war thing but it's not going to be this like blown out like 20 minute i didn't want it but i feel like a better person for experiencing it (laughs) and also like who wanted it 20 minutes (laughs) also yeah it was just like oh yeah who else you know only a handful of people or whatever can say they've experienced the roots doing a 20 minute rendition of a bob dylan song so that is pretty wild no wonders of live music exactly that's what makes it so so interesting and fun that you know anything can that you can do anything you want you can you can you can uh bang out a, like a one one rehearsal thing of like hey fuck around with this little thing maybe we'll play this live like that kind of thing mm-hmm. um whereas you have to produce a whole track and then then play it and then it has to be exactly the way it, um it's just the, the lack of flexibility that's i think we take for granted when we think about artists in general mm-hmm. um but it still managed to these guys still managed to make an entire album based off that that kind of flexibility flexibility that they had so um so what I, what I was saying earlier about this album having a black hole in the middle of it i it really feels like that whereas we're like ground zero is ground zero basically ground mm-hmm. zero is the black hole and everything around it gets less and less fucked up the further out it goes so mm-hmm. like Footwork in a forest fire is still fucked up, but it's less fucked up than Ground Zero. That's just San Francisco is is still fucked up, but less fucked up than foot. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And in the same way, in the opposite the, direction, the edges, clear, yeah, yeah. The edges smoke are acceptable, but the center exactly. Yeah. So smoke don't clear is is insane, but it's there's more. You, it's less fucked up than Ground Zero. And the topics for you is where it starts getting a little bit accessible again. And it starts being more melody. Yeah, that made me think of eight oh eights and heartbreaks. Um, but this way more creative, way more off the wall, um, very, very somber song, which I guess is the mood for, for the whole album. Yeah, it is very somber. Um, I found, I, I noted topics for you as apocalyptically beautiful where it's, it's pretty, but it feels like something is dying and dead and it feels decrepit and old. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, and it's also, uh, interesting to me the the vocals are so subtle and calm here they've always they, they, they go back and forth they do all kinds of stuff but it's like they're so calm they're so quiet and it, I find it, it's it's super rare to hear hip-hop where they don't they don't seem to care if you can understand a single word or not <laughs> like that's a very modern thing that is that is not how it was for a long time yeah yeah now oh man now it's a it's like a it's it's some would say it's the wild wild west <laughs> now that we're on the wild wild west the song wild wild west wicked wicked wild uh that one and i i just remembered like you wouldn't recognize a sample because you haven't heard it yet it samples shellac so oh fuck right when El- albini dies yeah um, we get a shellac sample it's from uh, the end of radio which was the first song they played live when i saw them um like over oh, 10 years shit. ago yeah um and it's funny I, I was listening to these albums with with my lady and she referred to this like at several points as ghost hip-hop and then that song comes on with a shellac sample and it's like whoa this is ghost hip-hop holy shit yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's a good way to put it even like the album cover is like very like apocalyptic and the end of the world yep but yeah this this song i thought a lucid from Armin Hammer was on here, but again, it's this Richie doing different shit. Uh, doing different shit. Also, 
good luck keeping any kind of tempo on this losers because i mean you could say that about a lot of songs yeah but especially yeah. this one it's just like this is a fucking it's, nightmare <laughs> it's it's insane it's and so, so the shellac sample is like the only grabbable thing in the song and even then it's completely fucked up like from you'd only recognize it if you heard the original a bunch of times and you mm-hmm. recognize a little the little um they're not even vocal lines they're like spoken word lines um which is where we jog my memory but the structures are just all over the place and the vocals are all over the place it's it's so cool but it is bad shit man apparently apparently the backstory to wild wild west um i don't, I don't know who this is yeah this is from richie he says wild wild west is a cool story because i had done those vocals for this band chinatown slalom they had sent this beat that was called the fastest gun in the west i kind of freestyled this song concept that ended up being a wild wild west song i sent it and was like these guys are gonna hate this the vocals are weird there's no structural hook it says a lot of a lot of times people will come to you for what they think they like you for they're not not going to come to you for your mentality so some some people may not understand what you do fully they may think that you're you're one thing it says they ended up not ever saying anything which was amazing because then parker built a whole different song which is a thousand times better that's an example of a song where the vocals were technically for something totally different and he built something else kind of crazy and meta it was really genius of him and then tom posted a picture of will smith and wild Wild west right underneath it for us thank you tom oh it's beautiful it's beautiful <laughs> it's a great photo. Uh, also anyone remember i think it was the vmas when they performed wild wild west and they were clearing the stage and someone was supposed to get Stevie Wonder. No one came to get Stevie Wonder. They, they, forgot so Stevie? This, they forgot Stevie on stage. <laughs> you can see it. Like he's just sitting there waiting for someone to come. And that's, that's <laughs> fucking, someone died that night for forgetting him. 100%. It's, it's funny. It's harmless. He wasn't like in the way of a, a bear or anything. <laughs> And now for the next act, a bear. Yeah, yeah it's just <laughs> oh, funny. No, They're like presenting stuff, and Stevie's just patiently <laughs> just wait, just waiting. <laughs> That's great. Oh shit. <laughs> but, yeah, these samples they they feel like they're from a fucking different dimension, man. Like post post part. Yeah, post post part of feels really familiar and soulful, but it sounds like it's being played from the astral plane. It doesn't sound like it. Oh, it, dude, you, the things that you can grab onto, they still feel like you can't touch them. Yeah, I think that's my favorite track. I don't know how it ends up being the druggiest, trippiest song on here. And yeah, th- the beats are like, again, they're very like delayed, almost like in like. But up, but up. Yeah. Are everything like, is everything slightly off. Yeah. I man, I love I love that song. That was great. And then it's knees great. knees, I was surprised to hear like R and B vocals continuing oh, yeah. the like you said, very soulful aspect of it. Because we're further away from ground zero. So you exactly, can exactly. Start getting a these little is- a little more normal. It's it's beautiful. Nina's absolutely beautiful. That's the song that samples Black Midi. Okay, yeah, it's the ultimate start stop song. It's this, but it's but it, but like yeah, uh, it samples Sweater, which was um, which album? Which album was that? Oh, they're yeah, it's on it's their EP? EP. Yeah, I haven't heard oh, that okay. one either. Yeah, it samples that. And uh, I mean, I couldn't point. Obviously, I don't know the song, but I couldn't. I couldn't point it out either way. But it is it is beautiful um mm-hmm. and his vocals are super subtle but they're very gentle and they they work really really well it's one of the, the prettiest songs on the album um one of my favorites on the album uh yeah but it, it also just brings me just such intense sadness like a lot of these songs do but that's one of the ones that i really like god damn hits you in the feels yeah yeah that's great but fucking a man and then the appropriately titled by storm yep um it is technically upbeat but this time i feel like it's a synth journey off into the void but a peaceful journey off into the void it indeed is that's a that sample is a brian eno sample hell yeah uh yeah and uh 
Richie said for that when he says for the outro, we knew that we wanted to use that sample, um, which is from Here Come the Here Come the Warm Jets by Brian Eno. That's another song where I had done the, those vocals to a totally different beat and didn't hit as well. The writing was really cool. The tone was a little different, but still similar. It's this weird juxtaposition where it's this hopeful vibe. One day he sent it and he had the vocal on that sample and those crazy drums and we were just like, oh my God, we did it. Oh, man. And, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful closer. Another one that just makes me fucking sad. And it made me extra sad when I watched the thing that they did after this album was released, which uh, we'll talk about in a second, um, which adds way more gravity. Adds, it brings in a memorial for, for Steppa and it, it's, it's super it's sad. I'm going to need to look that up. Yeah. Um, it, it was in um, 2023, I believe, or maybe, maybe earlier than that, but we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. Uh, but it's beautiful. It it's like a that that's it's such a strange because it is pretty and it is nice and it has like this happiness to it that's a little bit with tinge of sadness. But also it all it also literally sounds like two completely different songs playing at the exact same time. <laughs> uh, and I find it like that it really walks the line between pleasant and un, and unpleasant. I bet they're fans of Flaming Lips, Zyrica help them. Ah, I, I you know I've never listened to the album in the way it was intended. I. I'm so like conflicted on how to listen to that album because there's so many, so many possibilities. I've done, yeah. I've done the four boom boxes. I've done yeah. that a few times just because like that's the most complete. But like, I think when you start getting into like pairs and threes, like that's yeah. like re- that's real interesting. Very interesting. I remember um, reading an old review from Mark Prindle, who we've ca- talked about his old website that's been defunct for 15 years now, but I've been talked about, uh, I, I, learned, I discovered a lot of music on the website and he gave that one a, uh, a 10 out of 10 and talked about like the different ways you can listen to it. And according to this guy, um, he said like three was the sweet spot, like mm. any variation of three, because then it starts to lose um, time. They start to go. Yeah. Up, they start to de- they start to desync. De- de- but uh, I've only only way I've ever heard it actually is from someone uploading uh, a fully mixed version mm. of all of them. Like they went in fucking Audacity or something. And yeah, then they, and then they uploaded that. Um, so it, even though it's like, oh yeah, this is technically the album. It's your it's you're hearing all the. All the you're hearing every single note that was played. It's not the same as it's like not the, the same. Yeah, stereo over in this corner and the one in this corner, and then like, yeah. And all of a sudden, how do you fucking time pressing play at the same time? It's just such a very that's, interesting album. I, I think that's part of it is that you, yeah. can't, you can't. You can't. Yeah, and now like, and you have to like to me. You have to do CD because you could do it with like or at least MP3. At least MP3s, but if you were doing like streaming, you run the risk of like, oh, like the audio drops out or something, or like, yeah, like you would have to do MP3s. Turn your phone on airplane mode. Yeah, and, and I don't believe it's streaming because of the immense complications of <laughs> you literally can't play two songs at the same time. I I held on to that one because I'm like it's too it's too unique. You can't like streaming yeah. MP. It's not gonna. It's not the same. I need the it's CDs. Not, yeah, yeah. Um, I need to locate four boom boxes purely. That's the hardest. People be part. like, you just hold on to four boom boxes. I'm like, yeah. It's for technically it's one album worth of four boom boxes. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah. But back to the song. Um, yeah. It, it's a, it's a great closer that has this wholesomeness to it um, that it's pleasant, but it is still um, on the difficult. I mean, the whole album is difficult, but it is one of the more pleasant things on a immensely difficult album. Per- perfect. They three for three for closers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great at closures. Yeah, this is one of the most unique <laughs> albums. I wouldn't even say rap albums. One of the most unique albums ever. It's what, um, would it have made your list? <sighs> Thinking about what it, I'm, I'm forgetting all the albums that came out that because 2021 was a fucking crazy year. Like it was a really good year. Um, that was Lingua's last album, which was my album of the year. Crawler from uh, 
from um from idols um the the godspeed the last godspeed album incredible uh ghost bath had an incredible album like there was like real fucking good albums from that year ah oh, man maybe I i'm wanna, try, no, like trying to like <laughs> we have so many episodes it's fucking hard to like pop up <laughs> oh it, well it's under we have a there's a playlist for the year end episodes on the okay, main page okay good so, i i was just like oh if you type in 20, like right no yeah i'm pulling it up too i'm, I'm curious to, to our picks if it would have made it so for my i had emma ruth rundle and, Th- and thou godspeed gojira danny alfman melvin's Ghost Bath, Emma, Emma Ruth Rundle, Idols, and Converge and Chelsea Wolf. And of course, Lingua was the album of the year. Um, you know, I can't say for sure. I think this might have taken the place of Converge and Chelsea Wolf. Okay. Because yeah. if I if I yeah, looking at this list now, I, th- I, I think like to sell more than that one. I think I think Viagra Boys may have gotten cut. That's yeah. I forgot you had Viagra Boys on there. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was a great year. It was a fucking great uh, year. It, it's weird. It was a good year, but it was also like it's hard for me to pick a number one. That's my like my least confident. Like it's a great fucking album. I love that album, but like yeah, King Woman, Celestial Blues. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, like the the of, of the year end stuff. Oh, the one yeah. that I. Actually, huh? you know what? No, I would I think I would have cut the the DC Dark Knights death oh. metal soundtrack. I think that would have got cut. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um looking at like the year end stuff, the the album that I was the least confident giving uh album of the year is actually one of my most confident ones. <laughs> and that's uh I can't even remember the all them witches from twenty twenty. Oh, I was so I was so like happy and astonished by that pick like dude i have gone back to that album countless times i yeah. love it like that is like looking back at 2020 that is undoubtedly my, like the album of the year for me like that it's it just yeah. dwarfed all the other ones man it's crazy that's it's crazy and i'm so happy he picked it yeah because i like yeah, half-heartedly it, like suggested that to, i was like it's not gonna end up on his list yeah fucking dominated <laughs> yeah. we, we found some we found some some pretty damn good gems doing this pod hell yeah uh, yeah and this album even though we keep fucking going on tangents about other things it is an, it's, it is an amazing it's, album because it's so rich and also i i wanted to talk about it and because i remember giving it a listen and i was just like this is like i got too much going on it's yeah there's a, that's that's the thing that I, that that kind of makes me uh, iffy about the year end stuff. It's like because stuff like this, if you're if you're on a deadline and you're trying to listen to as many albums as you can, and you're like you're, you're doing the thing of like, well, what's gonna what's gonna catch me? You're gonna lose out on something super deep and and fucked up and interesting because just, it's not immediately pleasant. We're we're just two men. There's it's just it's gonna happen it's it's a fun thing to do it makes me seek out things and some things are gonna fall through the cracks like injury yeah. reserve yeah but this was a one hell of a send-off and a pretty sad album um all in all but after after this, this is from a, an article by the fader from 2023 um it talks about this music video that they put out as a tribute to to Steppa. And uh, I'll, I mean, I watched the music video. It's very moving. It's a, it's a it's 10 minutes and it has, it has by storm on it. And then a new song made by Parker and Richie. So this article says there is no truly satisfactory way to operate in the wake of such a loss. Simply carrying on can look cold-hearted while ending a group suddenly may be unsatisfactory to, to fans seeking closure. Two years later, Richie and Corey have found a new way to move forward. Uh, it came earlier this month in the form of a 10-minute long music video. The first half comprises candid footage of Grog's In the Good Times, soundtracked by Injury Reserve's By Storm, the closing song on By the Time I Get to Phoenix. The latter half is a new song, Double Trio, their inaugural single as a duo under the moniker By Storm, and that's B-Y instead of B-Y-E. 
Richie and Corey are reluctant to say at this stage whether there will be more by Storm music. For the time being, they just want to let Double Trio breathe. It's a song that requires space, too. The emotions that run through Richie's lyrics start out raw. He's kept awake by the pain of Grog's loss. Corey's beat, like a billowing cloud of smoke, cloaks Richie's words and matches his darkness bar for bar. Slowly, the, I, I, he's just explaining the song. But it's a very moving song. It's very good. It's very intense. It's lengthy. It's beefy. There's a bunch of stuff. The music video is, is pretty intense and it's really well shot. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's worth seeking out. Um, That's beautiful. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely going to check it out. Yeah, it's like a. It, it, it actually does feel like the most appropriate thing you can do after a member dies. Like, because mm-hmm. you, we, you've seen every every version of it. You've seen like, all right, well, we're done now. Fucking, and then you see the ones where they, they replace them, which is shitty. And then you see the ones where they 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 go on, but without them, like they don't even replace them. They just keep. Mm. Um, there's all kinds of things. I think this is like the best way to do it. It's like, all right, one last new thing that's a tribute to the that, and then all right we'll see you later for now yeah because yeah i mean you gotta like it feels like the most he- most healthy way to go about it yeah yeah i like it and it's a great song ah uh, man what a wild ride who <laughs> wicky wild wow <laughs> uh but yeah thanks so much for listening and watching and hanging out let's do a little recap um but for both of us uh best or sorry worst least favorite drive it like it's stolen the every album's better and better so the beginning is the worst but not really great ep and then uh best personal favorite by the time i get to phoenix i don't completely understand this album but i know it's special i know it's unique and i know i'm i'll come around i know i'll get i know i'll get to phoenix one day You'll get to Phoenix. I mean, I hope not. Literally, I don't ever want to go to Phoenix. It's very hot. I don't like Joshua Tree. I can't imagine I would like Phoenix. It's very flat. It's very flat and hot. So mm, at least Joshua like Tree my- and Palm Springs got them them heal those rolling mountains. Them heels. Yeah, definitely. I'm not a fan of flat cities. Not a fan of hot flat cities. I like a, a little bit of culture. Don't, don't go to the Midwest. I won't. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you so much for listening and watching and hanging out. Uh, thank you to Amboss for requesting this and, and supporting us on the Patreon and doing all that cool stuff. You, uh, you can follow me on all social media at Pander Monkey and Alex on Instagram at Every Album Alex. And please help out and support our history guy, Tom Osmond, at Tom Osmond Sounds on all social media, as well as Tom Osmond for all his music and uh, his, his podcast, Whatever Comes Next, which you can find on all the platforms, YouTube. Spotify, Apple, whatever. Uh, it's where he interviews a bunch of awesome indie musicians. And uh, yeah, he, he does a bunch of work for us, re- research, gets interviews for us, gets albums for us. So go there, do that, yada, yada, yada. And it's Substack, sometimeisman.substack.com. And for us, Patreon, baby, patreon.com slash every album ever. That's where you go. You get bonus episodes. You get two bonus episodes a month. You get to see your schedule in advance. You get to vote on polls to decide who we cover next. You get to join our Discord and be a part of our very active community. And uh, that's also where we pick out our singles episodes. So if an album came out this year and you want to hear us talk about it, uh, we go directly to d- the Discord for that. And if you're tier two, if you're bigger than Jesus, then you could suggest a full discography, just like Amos did. Um, and in addition to, to suggesting a full discography, you can suggest any album from any discography uh, for us to make a, a Patreon bonus episode on. So if you don't want to hear the full discography or if you don't care or if you don't think we'll ever get to it, just throw us an album and we'll do a bonus episode on there. So go there. Do that. Thank you. Now, closing it out. What I, are we listening to? I feel like there's one song this because it such a large shadow has been looming and i feel like by storm is this it's the perfect send-off for the band i think you're you are correct it is indeed so thank you so much for listening and watching see ya